for writing your books? There's no special formula per se. It's, it's part textbook, part self-help book. So students can read it as well as anyone who just wants to improve their business English or wants to make their English more professional. They can also use it. It's, we try to make the book friendly and user friendly and approachable, but there is also a, there's, the academic element is there, but we don't um, force it too much. We make, you know, make it approachable and easy to understand and comprehensible so um, that anybody from ages 18 to 65 can read the book, use the book. Do you have any other special procedure for writing? Uh, when you're writing, you have to think about your audience. Uh, you have to keep in mind who are you writing the book for? Who is going to read your book? Or any, not just a book, your articles or essays. You have to think of why, firstly, why should a person read my work? Secondly, how can I make it interesting for them? How can I make it appealing for them? Um, and also you've got to think about the audience, their age group, a specific age group, their likes, dislikes, their, phone, their, their kind of language that they use, their tone, um, their thinking, you know, kind of getting to the psych. Um, if you can do that, it means you can form a relationship with the audience. And that will reflect in your writing, and then that will make writing more effective and more appreciated. Hopefully. Do you have any clear idea of wanting to write books? What was the earliest goal? So, um, yes, uh, when I was little, I always thought I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and then as I grew up and I watched a lot of TV, like most kids do, and I liked the idea of being a TV presenter with what you're doing now. And um, then uh, when I came into, when I was um, in my 12th standard, um, uh, I was uh, dabbling between the idea, should I go for teaching after my 12th, or should I go for, um, should I go for journalism? Because I was doing an internship with the Statesman newspaper during my 12th. So I really liked the idea of journalism, I really, because I was fascinated by it. And I got, um, so I went in and I thought, um, okay, no, I'll do a degree in journalism because it's more interesting, teaching may, be, may get boring later on. So I did that and I became a journalist. Um, and yes, then I started uh, writing for various, um, I write for the student newspaper at my university, writing for various websites and magazines after I graduated. Um, and then I got offered a position to lecture in journalism at a small private college in London. And I said, okay, fair enough, I'll give it a go. So I ultimately went back to teaching, which was my ultimate goal. And I really started enjoying it. I was teaching journalism, so combining both my dreams. Writing a book was something that I didn't really think of, not until recently when Fiona proposed the uh, offer to me. Um, it was something that I thought, okay, maybe when I'm older and when I'm retired and 65 and I'm, you know, no one will take me for work, I can just sit at home and write. I didn't think it, uh, writing a book would come so early in my career. At what point did you decide to become a lecturer? And how did you go on to become a writer? I was a writer first, lecturer later, as I said, because I did my degree in journalism, went off to London to do the degree. Um, so I, writer, I was a writer from then, because in class we have to write articles, and write and write and write scripts and articles and essays and whatnot. So I, I've always loved writing, and um, I've, I am first a writer. Um, but then uh, when lecturing, as I said, it, it came as a surprise. I mean, I wasn't actually thinking of going into teaching per se, because it would mean I'd have to take a teaching qualification, and I really didn't like the idea of going back to university. I, I, I just wanted to carry on working. So when um, a, a contact of mine, he said that he was a dean of this private college and he said that we were looking, we need a teacher, somebody who can teach and listen. I said, well, look, I haven't actually taught students before. I don't have a teaching qualification, but he said, do you get along with young people? Do you, you know, do you have any, um, you don't have any issues with that? I said, no, I don't. I said, well, give it a go. Let's see how it goes. So I started off and I enjoyed the course, enjoyed teaching, and I continued. And then since then, for from 2007, this was back in five years ago. I've been teaching ever since. 
um, even so when I came to India after marriage, after writing the book, I joined ILEAD, um, one of our premier institutions in uh, Calcutta, and continued teaching. Sometimes giving up a dream can lead to other dreams. What do you have to say for this? Yes, giving up a dream. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, when you uh, like, when I got married, um, you I had to give up some of my time for professional work. I had to devote that to my family, my new family, and to my personal life. Um, and then I suppose the book, when it when I they came in at the right time, because at the time where. I didn't actually want to work, go and to a college and teach. I wasn't in that mode, but I also wanted to do something, and I wasn't I didn't want to sit at home idle. So the book came at the perfect time where I actually could you know, sit and write at home and you know send off emails at Fiona you know, and we could bounce off ideas. And so um, you do sometimes it, a, a dream to achieve one dream, you have to forego another dream, but it's worth it at the end of the day. It's worth it. You found the time to write, so you must be pretty motivated. Yes, 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 pretty much. I mean, a, a writer, uh, as a writer, I believe that um, you have to always have your eyes and ears open, um, look out for ideas, and um, always be on the lookout for ideas. You never know when something can strike you just like that. You think, oh, this could be an article, or this could be an essay, or this could be a poem, because I write a lot of poetry as well. Um, and so I'm always on the lookout for ideas. Sometimes it could be I'd be talking to some students in class, hear something from them and I think, oh, okay, this could be a good idea for an article. Or sometimes I could just be watching TV and see something on TV and that might strike me as interesting and then, okay, I could write this on my blog. So you, I always am open to ideas and that keeps me motivated. What is so satisfying to you about writing? Uh, the most satisfying part of writing is when people read it. <laughs> and they read it and they give feedback. Oh, I read your article, or I read your blog post, or um, I read your poem and I really liked it. I thought it was very good. Um, or then I asked them, what did you like about it exactly? Or, or what did you not like about it? I think the feedback part is the most satisfying. Even if it's criticism, at least you know that uh, the reader has read your work and has appreciated it enough to criticize it and to say what he or she feels. I think that's the very uh, most satisfying part. Um, next to that is, of course, the writing itself. When you sit there and you have an idea in your head and you have to get it out on pen and paper or you, know, you have to type it out, it has to come out. I think that's the, that passion at that time is, is, is lovely. It's the best feeling. Did you have any experience as a kid that inspired you? Yes, as a child I was always a bookworm, hence glasses, because I've been wearing my eyes out. Um, uh, I love reading, still love reading, and um, to be honest, my inspiration came from my teachers um, in primary school. They, they, they noticed that I read a lot, and they would encourage me, why don't you read this book, why don't you read that book, and you, know, you would probably like this and that. And then they would encourage me to write stories, and you know, when I write, wrote stories, and then they would really appreciate it. So they kept motivating me to write more, write better, because you, um, they believed in my work. Um, and so that really spurred the writing bug. So your teachers are your inspiration? Yes, definitely. Was there any moment in your career that really stands out? Yes, there are quite a few defining moments. Um, when uh, the book, obviously, has the most defining moment at the end of my career. But also lecturing as well, that came, that was, I'm, I'm so glad that I became a lecturer, because I really do enjoy it. It's really the most satisfying. Teaching is more satisfying than writing. Because when you see your students' success, um, and you know that you, you, you are somewhere down the line, you are a part of that success. That's really satisfying. There was that, and then I suppose when I graduated, that was a nice, it was a very key moment, a very proud moment for my family, for me. Um, and yeah, I think I could probably say these were three key moments. Graduation, lecturing, the book. Tell us about your family and your friends. I'm originally from London, and um, I was born and raised in London. 
Um, and I lived there till I was about 12 years old. Um, then my parents decided that they wanted me to have an education in India, have at least do high school in India, and get some of the Indian culture, uh, Bengali culture specifically. And so what happened then between, well, through high school basically, I was in India um, studying. Um, and then, so what would happen is, and my, um, I would, in the summer, because the summers are very hot out here, I'd go to London, um, and then, because my dad was working there, and during uh, Diwali and Puja time, my father, he would come to India. So in this way, it was a constant traveling for all of my high school years. I was always constantly traveling between two cities, London and Calcutta. Um, I have most of my families out here. Um, my in-laws and my own family, they relatives are in Calcutta. But I, I have a, my, my own parents, my own brother, I have a younger brother, and uh, an uncle of mine and his family. We're in London. Um, so, yes, um, that's pretty much it. I have friends in London and in India, and constantly fitting between London and Calcutta. <laughs> You have written this book with Fiona Talbot, as you said, and you said how all this worked out. So do you have any words of encouragement for aspiring young writers? Of course. I mean, now that um, with writers nowadays, we have, you know, social media network, Facebook, Twitter. These are, I think, they are blessings, um, as much as maybe people might um, disagree with me. But they are blessings in terms that you can actually contact and communicate with anyone from anywhere in the world. Um, and that's how my relationship with Fiona, our professional relationship, grew out of Twitter. Mm. This is a tweet and then the rest of the story. You never know how something as small as a tweet could lead to such a thing. Neither did she think it, nor did I. Um, I thought that was a pleasant surprise. And I mean, I wouldn't have been in contact with so many people, uh, with writers and distinguished writers and celebrities who are now celebrities in their own fields in culture and films, um, if it weren't for uh, Twitter or Facebook. Um, so use social, I would say, use social media to your advantage. You know, join, follow the fan pages, follow these uh, celebrities on Twitter, follow writers and um, author, your favorite authors. They usually all are, they have a Twitter account or a Facebook account. Follow these pages, follow these uh, people, interact with them, send your feedback, say, I really like this book, or I actually don't think you did this well. Um, they appreciate it, they really do, and they'll interact with you, and you never know when something could click. Because as much as, you know, it's all right to be a good writer, but you also need to know people. You need to know your contacts, and you need to establish contacts. And um, so social media is the best bet to start from. So finally to finish, do you have anything to say about the book and to our viewers? Yes, well I'll say go, please go and buy the book. It's called Improve Your Global Business English. It's by Conan Page. Um, we do have a fan, Facebook fan page and, um, and that's simply if you type in Improve Your Global Business English uh, on Facebook search, the page will pop up. Please come and join us there. You'll get all the information including where to buy the book and information about us and you can interact with me and Fiona um, and we'd be happy to hear from you uh, especially your thoughts about the book itself so that's what thank you so much for your time Mrs. Bhattacharji thank you for having me